Dan, I have a random hockey topic if you want me to start or if you're looking. If, unless you, obviously, it's your show, so you have <laughs> Just kind of just throwing it out there for you. I have something if you want me to start. We've started already. Oh, well, hello there. Hello, hey. audience. Welcome hey, to Hour 2. I do. Um, last night, there was a freaking weird, I like to call it a hat trick bad beats, do guys. Did you see this? No. So a guy for the Minnesota Wild, Joel Erickson Eck. Yes. He got. He had two goals. Late in the game, he gets a third goal. We didn't talk enough yesterday about a goalie having 70, what was it, nine goals in a yeah. triple overtime game? 79 <laughs> saves, not 70, goals. Oh, excuse me, 79 that, saves. That's a record, yeah. there, Dan. <laughs> well, I think, the other one should be, I think the other one should be a record for the position, too. There have been a lot of times when there have been 79 saves. How, triple how, overtime. I mean. How often? Like, Roy, yeah. when was the last goalie goal? Uh, Does that ever happen? happen? Yeah, yes, it's happened. Well, open Ryan Hextall. It would be an open net, right? Door. Yeah, yeah, it'd be an empty net, yeah. Huh. Anyways, okay, so this guy, he has two goals. Late in the game, he gets a third goal. At hockey games, when you get a hat trick, you throw your hat onto the ice. So a bunch of hats go flying onto the ice, and then the goal is overturned. Do these people get their hats back? No, they don't. So I feel bad. For, it's a hat bad. It's a hat trick bad beat. You threw your hat, and you lost your hat, and wow. there's no hat you got, trick. So you yep. have to wait for the review. You have to make sure that everything's right. right before you hurl your hat, which goes against the premise of right. hat hurling. Right. Why would you ever throw your hat on the ice? Like, I get it. You probably get lost in the moment, and you're yeah. like, oh, I want to do that. Everyone else is doing it. But, it's cool. But I like all my hats. No, there's so do I. There's not a single hat I would do you bring an ex- Do you think people bring an extra hat? You have to bring a hat that you wouldn't normally wear. No it's got to be an old hat. No shot people bring extra hats. No, but you, you should. You can't bring bags. No, the you're best, just carrying I, a hat. I love that you're bringing this up because this story gets even better. Okay, so it gets overturned. The hat trick is now, there's no hat trick that's been had so far. All these people lost their hats. Now, later in the game, ah. somebody else from the Minnesota Wild scores a, thir- a, a hat trick. So now another player on the Wild actually gets a goal that stands. <laughs> so now there's a hat trick. More hats start flying. So that means there were people that were like, not throwing my hat for Joel Erickson. But then they're like, <laughs> wait, but somebody else has a hat trick. So they're like, now I'll throw my hat. Like, right. who's the person? You don't think people are bringing two hats? You don't but think I, people? I want to know who's the person that was like, not throwing it for the first guy. But now, you know what? I have to. Was the lamp red on the first guy? Because I would say there's a bunch of people who they showed, you know, some patience and said, I'm going to wait for the for the official oh, okay. to confirm the goal. They held on to their hats. Yeah. That's what a KG vet does. I wow, just, that is yes. literal. You've got to be patient. You've got to hold on to your hat. Yes. <laughs> Get away from the horn. I, mean. I don't even know the origins of the phrase, hold on to your hat. Where does it come from? Is it like you're at a train station? What are the origins of that? Uh, the uh, NHL record, by the way, for saves in the game is 85 by Jonas Kopasalo. I have in August 11th. 2020. What about goals in a game by a goalie? Probably not 79. <laughs> I think like hold on to your hat is like if you're about to be driving really fast in a car or on a train yeah. and the wind is going to blow your hat and it's like, hold on to your hat. But That's usually like I, on a roller coaster, they tell you to take off your hat. Nowadays, it's like, mm-hmm. don't just hold on to your hat. Take it off. Imagine if you're wearing a hat on a roller coaster and it flies off and hits the person behind you at full I, speed. I don't like when I'm on a ride, Ow. a fast ride at a theme park, and they're like, take your sunglasses off. It's like, hey. How about you let me be the judge of that? Okay? I'm going to lay my sunglasses on. If I lose them, that's my risk. How about you do your job, but and what, I'll worry about, about my sunglasses. What about others, though, hitting others in the nope. face from behind? Like, the people it's behind choice, you. I mean, it's, hit, it's, it's your choice to hit people in the my face. My life. Let me live it. But what about the faces of the people behind you who are going to be hit by your flying they glasses? They should have glasses on. Because you're an oaf. <laughs> They'd be protected with glasses. For, for all the hockey fans in the room, do you ever consider when you're going to a hockey game what hat you're putting on and think, I might have to throw this hat later, so maybe I'll wear like my third favorite hat. Well, put it put it on the poll. That's what I'm saying. At Lebetard Show, does anyone bring two hats to a hockey game in the event that there are two hat tricks? Yeah. Or well, then three hats because you need to wear one on your right. head. Right. If you're bringing you hats, you're a hat wearer. Two. Right. Right. So does anyone bring an extra hat other than the one on their head? Is the question. Uh, Chris, Whittingham. you made me think of uh, you made me think of uh, Adnan Verk and the project that you guys are doing together. Uh, Cinephile, you should check that out every week. Adnan uh, made me laugh though last night because <laughs> in the middle of a Major League Baseball broadcast, I believe it was an Anthony Rendon home run. Adnan Verk, as a home run call, shouted out, "Welcome to Tangier." <laughs> and while I love that for our audience, I really felt bad for the 70-year-old who was watching this broadcast 
doesn't like baseball to change very much, wants a damn home run call that sounds like an old-fashioned home run call, and instead gets the inexplicable welcome to Tangier <laughs> that has no reference point whatsoever. Who and cares? and And some 70-year-old <laughs> is thinking, why is this Adnan Virk? Say, why is Tangier in my broadcast? Why is welcome to Tangier a home run call? And, of course, the answer to that is because Adnan Virk looks like the secret agent who greets James Bond when he lands on the island by helicopter and says to him, welcome to Tangier. <laughs> there was a long pause after he said it, and he was he was doing the game with Tom Verducci. And I just was feeling Tom Verducci like looking over at him. Like there was a long pause. No, after he, he said, said Verducci it. found it funny, and no one else did. <laughs> That's great. Did he text you that he did it? Oh yeah, yeah, because he sent yeah, me yeah. one too. <laughs> and we were proud of him. We were proud of I him for it. throwing in the broadcast. Yep. But seven people got what he was doing. Imagine the confusion of somebody watching and waiting for a home run. What the hell does "Welcome to Tangier" mean? <laughs> They don't even know where Tangier is. That's correct. They don't know what the reference is, I'm assuming. In any way, nobody except people who listen to this show. The, otherwise, they're saying, why is this person welcoming me? <laughs> There's no explanation for that other than you listen to the show. What, and Wouldn't they say the same thing about John Sterling, though? I mean, <laughs> generally, at least the ball went out. I mean, <laughs> That is true, but you generally don't have a Major League Baseball network telecast with a home run call, a pretty big moment, something totally nonsensical to 99.9% .9 of the audience. I imagine this is how Whittingham felt when he said penis on the MLS broadcast. Because there's most people listening just were like, wow, it seems like that announcer really just wanted to say penis. That's pretty weird. Speaking of witty, he went up on that plane at around 10 a.m. It's 1115. I've heard nothing from winning. Him. We will get back to that. My wife, I'm scared because I've gotten some video of her getting on the helicopter. She is doing helicopter wow. flips as we speak. But you mentioned Whittingham, and I missed him today because he is the only broadcaster in America brave enough, with the balls, you might say, to say penis when someone gets hit, not in the midsection, the nether regions, or the ding-ding, or anything else. It's the penis. Mm -hmm. Did you see what happened with Altuve last night? Because he went foul tip off his own bat right in the penis. Ooh. Really? <laughs> yes, and and foul tip describes both uh, the action and how he woke up this morning and when he looked at his penis, <laughs> what it looked like. It covers it all. Foul. <laughs> I mean, that. if you haven't seen the video, I'm assuming he's wearing a cup. I'm not sure Ooh. a cup's even helping you it's very these much. these damn submarine pitchers, man. The ball's coming from these weird angles because I was thinking to myself, I didn't see it. I, that you never see that. It's got to be a weird angle for that to happen. It's a damn. I guarantee you, yes. it has something put to it, do with this submarine pitcher. Put it on the poll at Lebetard Show. It's those damn submarine pitchers. I'm telling you, yes or no. I'm voting at yes. Lebetard yeah. Show. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve goalies have been credited oh, wow. with goals. Look at you in the National Hockey League in National Hockey League history. Half of which have been own goals, actually, wow. which is really? interesting. That doesn't count. But the other half, uh, Martin Brodeur has three total. Yeah, have Martin there, would sir. Have I there, thought Hexel had two, didn't he? Yes, he had Hexel. two. Yeah. Have there been any that aren't open netters? Because that would be impressive. Uh, I believe. I uh, it, no, Ugh. except for the own goals. They yeah. were just credited by name. Chris, uh, you have him skating down one? the ice. I like, just, you know, a little. little <laughs> no, so I rocket came from the opposing blue line. line. <laughs> the first ever goalie to score, by the way, Billy Smith. Ah, uh, Smitty. <laughs> I had a cat named Smitty. He died. <laughs> How many goalie fights have there been? A lot. More than goalie, uh, more than goals. Apparently, there's been yeah. plenty I of goalie fights. Remember when Beezer and Barrasso threw down? Oh yeah, I think Billy time. Smith got Smitty got into the most fights of any goalie in hockey history. Like he lived to fight Bill Smith. That's a great trivia question. What about yeah. Hextall? Hextall, would Hextall mix it too. Up. I think yeah, Hextall too. You're right. You Ron. guys are making up names. You don't know um, Ronnie Hextall. Ron Hextall, Ron Hextall, Hextall is Tom one of the all time greats. What kind of idiot are you? You don't know who Tom Barrasso is. Thinking of my top mind. five hockey you goalies of all time. Hold on. I wanted to ask you guys something from first take yesterday, Stugatz, because J.J. Redick had a viral moment in which it is being alleged he dusted our man Chris Mad Dog Russo. Oh, Chris God. Mad Dog Russo was on first take saying, among other things, to Draymond Green, some form of shut up and dribble, tired of you, you're not popular, you're polarizing. And J.J. Redick, who is speaking truth unlike most people, I'm not saying most people at ESPN He's too honest. Don't, don't speak hey. the truth, but I'm <laughs> saying that J.J. Redick speaks the truth more overtly than it seems like anybody at ESPN. And he was right in Mad Dog's face. 
And he went on for two minutes that was popular enough that it got, you know, more than 10 million views, at least in part because Draymond Green is tweeting out that J.J. sent this clown back to the circus. Speaking of Mad Dog Russo and Stugat, this is blasphemy against our beloved icon, Matt Dog Russo. I am stuck here in a place between arguing on behalf of J.J. Reddick, <laughs> telling Mad Dog Russo that he is espousing Fox talking points, and also I want to side with Draymond Green because I just generally like his rebellion, polarizing attitude that says of Mad Dog Russo, J.J. sent this clown back to the circus, but I have to root for Havelcheck. Havelcheck soak, Havel soak takes that don't embarrass Mad Dog Russo and put him on first take to be quiet and listen. That is not why he is there. <laughs> first take's on to something with those three together because it pops on social. JJ has a, a big internet following, and whenever he goes at Mad Dog, it kind of gets outsized what is actually the content. Yeah, the, the Fox News line, I can understand why that pops a little bit, but the things that he's saying... It's not this like incredible take. No, it's just it's, something it's, it's that it's just no, it's not just it factor though, Mike. There has been a, a depletion of people willing to say things like that on ESPN as everyone sits out some of the politics stuff. JJ Reddick is not saying groundbreaking things. What he's doing so though is helping his own brand as a player, willing to say something and not sit out conversations that have a tinge of the race stuff in it. Mad Dog Russo lobbed that up pinata style for a spike of some sort. The moment is J.J. Reddick is going to take a sports moment about Draymond Green. It's going to have some black and white in it. It's going to have the politics of it. It's going to have the conversation around old media members talking about something and young athlete here to speak a truth that you are not seeing many people. I mean, I don't see Bomani on ESPN very much anymore. Mina's doing some of it, but there aren't spaces yeah. To have some of these conversations and Reddick, because First Take has a longer format and because Reddick wants at the trough where I'm the one who's going to do what McAfee did, use ESPN to build my platform. He goes on there with something to say every Wednesday. Not shocking to hear him say it just by comparison around some of the blandness that surrounds you because you're avoiding these subjects. He ends up popping. Yeah, but I'm not even talking about this one. I kind of understand why this one popped, just because Fox News, ooh, we we jump. Even though what he's saying is a conversation that actually happens with fairly commonplace, even on that network, especially when we were over there, talking about like the first time he went viral, which actually did bigger numbers than this one, Yeah, which is if you drop Kyrie Irving into the, the days of Bob Cousy, he'd be a wizard, and Cousy was going up against plumbers. That's not necessarily – I was shocked watching him. I'm like, why is this so popular? Has Mad Dog never heard this argument? It's it factor. They have something in J.J. Reddick, Mad Dog, and Stephen A. Smith because that had no business going viral. But I'm such going, a benign take. Um, but I'm going there on Wednesdays for Mad Dog. That's it. It's Mad Dog versus Stephen A. Smith, and I feel like J.J. Reddick's getting in the middle of that. Now, if you're telling me J.J. Reddick is making it better, perhaps I'll start watching again. But right now... I'm on hiatus on Wednesdays. Well, he actually, I, no, he'll call them me. out. Whereas Stephen A. And, and Russo just go back and forth. I don't doing want them called out. They, they like need, they're just they playing. They're blood. playing tennis with their personalities. Where JJ's like, "Oh, you said something. I'm going to call you out on it." They need yeah, a younger. I don't like that. It, it, Wednesday goes to a little too old of an audience, and JJ, I guess, brings in the younger following and speaks for right. a bunch of young people that are like, "Why is Stephen A. just letting this person talk about John Havlicek?" Who is John Havlicek? <laughs> and it's not just that, though. The other thing that's involved here, because, uh, you know, a lot of sports debate can be race trafficking. A lot of these partnerships end up being a white guy and a black guy on television shouting about different subjects. And Stephen A. Smith, I told you yesterday, Stephon Marbury's calling him an Uncle Tom. It's something you hear a great deal in the black community uh, sports fans who don't like the zealousness which with, with which Stephen A. Smith sometimes goes at black athletes. So to hear the white guy who was a former basketball player say to the white old guy who's using the dog whistle and the code of shut up and dribble 
to hear the white guy put the other old white guy in his place from a player perspective and have the older white guy say, hey, this isn't a race thing. And Reddick is like, I didn't mention race. Right? <laughs> Reddick yeah. did not bring up race anywhere in it. He was just saying finding Draymond polarizing is to find the arrogant black athlete who's not behaving the way that you would like him to polarizing because that style is not for you, yeah. but also because the arrogant black man who's opinionated is going to rub people worse than the arrogant white man from Duke who's on television telling you that he has the right to do yeah. that. Yeah, but it also wasn't Mad Dog telling on himself by saying this isn't a race thing because that was very clearly what J.J. Redick was going to, and he brought the hammer down with the Fox News stuff. So I'm not going to let J.J. Redick be cute on that. He was absolutely getting that. But they're all doing that is what I'm saying, that all of the networks that are looking for the ingredients that make some of this stuff pop – you have the starting point of this is a traditional debate show. We're going to put it on Wednesday, and we're going to have these old guys enjoy, have life in them because they're talking about old guy sports. How do we replenish that? How do we make it younger? As the ratings, we're not. But it in sucks the life out of Mad Dog. I mean. Well, you can't have Mad Dog on there to <laughs> take a beating life. just listening. <laughs> no, this That's this. not the point of being a Mad Dog. A Mad Dog does not listen. <laughs> a Mad Dog gets mad. Yeah, I, I, I think it actually breathes new life in a, in a Mad Dog. I'm I'm enjoying this uh, mainstream run that he's getting. And I do think he actually stands to benefit from the occasional viral supposed dunking on him by J.J. Redick. I think that's very much a rising tide lifts all. Do you think Mad Dog is enjoying it? Do you think he'd rather not have J.J. Redick there? I think My Mad guess is Mad Dog, Mad Dog was like, would, wait, I'm not enough? Mad Dog like, would rather Stephen A. not be there. <laughs> just him. <laughs> Mad, Dog, right? just him. I mean, I, I, Mad Dog <laughs> is very much enjoying any microphone time, and anybody that cuts into the microphone time probably has some degree of ire to it. Let's close the loop, shall we? I have found that there are six, six goalies in NHL history that have over 300 penalty minutes. Wow. Oh. We have a tie at number five. This is amazing. I got to write yeah. it down. Hold and, on. And I will say, none of these names are a surprise if you followed the sport in this era. Okay. Tied for fifth mm. at 310 penalty minutes apiece. Sean Burke. Wow. In the Beezer, John Van Beezer. Oh, oh, the Beezer. Wow. Don't mess around with the Beezer. No, I'm surprised the Beezer is that high. No, I would because not have thought of him as we that talked high. about the Beezer Barrasso fight. Yes. And if you're a goalie that mixes it up, you're also a goalie that's going to get some penalty minutes. So Beezer and Sean Burke tied for number five. Number four, we talked about this gentleman yesterday. Taser Dead Bell Four. Uh. He had 380 penalty minutes. A lot of people, Mike, really, and I do want to go to this library more often. So many people reached out to me who think they're longtime listeners of this show and said yesterday, I'd never heard any of those hokey pokies. That, uh, that is so old that I have not heard those. I want to go more through Billy's catalog diary from 2009, <laughs> see what we find in there that can uh, be dug out of the library. By the way, my wife uh, has texted that that's by far the coolest thing I've ever done. So really? she's alive. Right. Great. Good. Thank that's God. the only reason because she's alive. Right? Play the taser I mean, pokey? Yeah. Dan, what was the last thing you texted her before she got on the helicopter? Because I texted her and said, have fun. And then I realized that that was not going to be a really great like last message if something horrible were to happen. Dan texted her at 4 a.m. this morning. Break a leg. Goodbye. <laughs> did you text her? <laughs> I did not text her beforehand. No, I, I really? kissed her goodbye. And I'm uh, proud of her for being a great deal braver than any of us and triggering the leadership that made Whittingham and Tony jump from a plane because they had declined initially, and then my wife made everyone around here look bad. And so she did <laughs> helicopter flips, and Tony and Whittingham, we hope to give you the news that they're safe uh, before the I end of the show. I just texted them, are you alive? So I'll have an update. Nothing. Anything? Bubbles? Nothing? I heard Stugatz that they went into the helicopter at 11. So okay. not All 10. Right. So okay. they might, I think they might be jumping as we speak. We will wait here until we will have to tell the audience whether or not everything is okay. Roy just muttered, get back to the goalie. Please, number three. <laughs> number three. <laughs> not a surprise. Tommy Barrasso. Ah, Tommy. He had 437 Penalty minutes. Wow, double majors. I mean, there are goalies that go the entire, <laughs> they go multiple seasons without a penalty minute. Yeah, yeah. This is crazy. This is a lost art, too, because I don't think you're going to name any recent goalies. Oh, no, they're all from the same era. Number two, at a massive 475 penalty minutes, Billy Smith. Yes, Smitty. But are you surprised there's someone over him, though? You put him in I number two, there's I somebody am. over and, him. And he was a I badass, would, Dan. And I, mean, I would say. You had a cat named Smitty, didn't you? Yeah, he died. died. Yeah. 
I would say that the gulf between one and two on this list is greater than the gulf between one and two on my bathroom fights list that had Fallout at number one, which is by far the Tom Brady of bathroom fights. Clocking in at an inconceivable 569 no. penalty minutes. No way. Ronnie Hextall. Oh, man. Two goals and north of 500 penalty minutes. That's a Hall of Famer. It makes, it makes you wonder how he lost that goalie fight to Garth Snow. Oh, Garth Snow. Oh, that was a, you have two goalies, you don't have one. What a great reference by you, former Olympic goalie Garth Snow. That was a very disappointing Flyers core. I want. It was. You're right. I mean, they had Desjardins. They had Lindros. Was that Leclerc? They Leclerc. Leclerc. Yeah, Leclerc. They yeah. had Recky for parts of it. Brenda Moore. Brenda yeah. Moore. Mm-hmm. I can't Someone do 80s and 90s hockey with oh. the same verve that we're doing 80s and 90s uh, baseball. I wanted to ask you guys about a story that I don't believe we have covered enough. I just want to imagine all of you to imagine because I've seen some funny things on Twitter. Somebody pointing out uh, you've got in Busta Rhymes and Dave Chappelle and Jamie Foxx $250 million of black celebrity beating on you and you cannot sue because you've gone up there with some sort of ga- uh, ghetto bayonet that is a knife at the end of a gun. You can't sue them. Knife at the, at the end of a fake lock. <laughs> yeah, at, at the end. Uh, forgive me, I will ghetto find bayonet. the tweet to give the credit there because it was just a random person making that joke on on Twitter, but that fight, I want you, because I keep imagining, okay, a guy has gone up there with a fake gun that has a knife on it, hidden in Steve Martin, and he's attacking, <laughs> attacking Dave Chappelle. And then what I'm imagining after that is Busta Rhymes freestyling while he's hitting you, Jamie Foxx, doing an impersonation of Chappelle, Chappelle and Chris Rock cracking jokes because Jamie Foxx is already doing the impersonations of Chappelle giving people what they want from from what was a beat down there, saying, like, I see you other comedians not coming to help me with the knife bayonet guy. It's got to be Jamie Foxx who comes in here because all of you want to replace me. All of you standing there, I'm looking at you, Chris Rock, all of you standing there want to be where I am and you wanted this knife, this bayonet knife to take me out. It is a retread joke, but I do like to envision Busta Rhymes going up to the group saying, can I kick him? And everybody going, (laughs) yes, you can. (laughs) I think that Busta Rhymes, first of all, you saw him when he performed here at the Clevelander. He is thick and he is angry and he's not someone I would want stomping on me. <laughs> you have a particular type of person you I'm want stopping I'm on you. I'm saying that's not Busta Rhymes is not one of them. Like right. I, it that's seems, fair. it, it fair. seems that yes. would be a pretty unpleasant thing. But to walk away from that, Mike, with two dislocated hands, and like I said, be the result of the finishing move of uh, of one, you know Eli Gemstone, the wrestling move that leaves you with your hands distorted. Can we possibly in any world? Get the person on, the crazed lunatic on, who tried to attack Dave Chappelle to deconstruct his <laughs> thinking process. No? I'm guessing no, we're not going to get No, probably not. Him. No chance. Yeah. It's I mean, we could try. It's going to be a tough get. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to try. I think that uh, I think if we can get Welcome to Tangier inexplicably on an MLB Network uh, broadcast, we should at least try to find the uh, the, be- the the bayonet uh, gun. I, I want to go through this thought process. Well, is he in prison though? I mean, for the moment, <laughs> for the moment, I have to think so. I don't know what his bail. He's going to situ- use a call on his, us. His <laughs> bail situation is, and I don't know what his sanity situation is. It's insane, is what it is. Okay, but I have a, a lot of questions. Speaking of insanity i wanted to talk to you guys about uh something from the johnny depp amber heard trial that is an unusual celebrity trial to see playing out in public for a number of reasons the details being really dirty but stugatz one of the things and i don't know how many of you have been following this but one of the things that has been set up here in the me too movement as Amber Heard writes an op-ed six years ago that Johnny Depp is claiming, not incorrectly, has helped ruin his career and his ability to get other jobs. In the testimony so far by Johnny Depp, it really does appear, at the height of this movement, Stugatz, 
that Johnny Depp is making the argument and in making a convincing argument before Heard, Heard has just spent a couple of days on the stand, making the convincing argument that in this scenario, the man was the one who was in the abusive relationship. The man was the one who felt like the woman silenced, unable to say anything as an op-ed piece comes out claiming that he was the abuser. And the part that is hard to to discern while watching the testimony is that Johnny Depp is so much better an actor than Amber Heard that I'm watching this and I'm like, oh, he is making this very convincing that he is backpedaling the entire time, the subject of abuse and is trying to, in the celebrity, in a celebrity trial that is pitting people famous enough to take America's interest, that what's on trial is can the man be abused? Right. Can the man be the subject of the abuse because he is suing her for an op-ed in which she made claims, and as she acts more poorly on the stand in one day than he does, I could see how Johnny Depp is giving off docile, and it's hard for me to discern what the truth is because I can't separate myself from the fact that Johnny Depp has always been an amazing actor. And he's he would, acting his way out of this. No, I don't. It might be true. Also, it could I, be true. I, right. But, but part of it, part of the layer of interest for me in what it is that's happening is right there where he's him and his lawyers are trying to construct the argument that it was the man who was the one abused here. And now Amber Heard's testimony starts. And some of the details about things that Amber Heard has done, if you believe the testimony, can convince you of that as well. So Johnny Depp might simply be telling the truth. Scots. Yes. It says here you're a lacrosse coach. Hey. What's that like? That's a lot of fun, Mike. It's something I miss very, very much. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed winning. I enjoyed teaching lessons on the field and off the field. That's all right. Enough yeah. of that. Yeah, thanks. Say something nice about Ty Cobb. Oh. Great hitter. Judges? That works? Yeah, that works. I'm good. That's good. Thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you. And that was Say Something Nice About a Racist. <laughs> Is that the end of the game, or do I get another chance? No, I was, I we, was totally we, don't want, we don't trust you with this game. I beat You're you. You're bad at it. You don't trust me with this game? No, you so guys killed it. Disney? Yeah. You don't trust me with this game? Sorry. You open with Disney on me. Sorry. Some people were born to play this game. Yep. Some people aren't. Yep. Do you think this gets picked up for a full season? <laughs>
It's delightful music. Was, yeah, this came up yesterday, which is, what can I get that is more uncomfortable than would you attend their funeral? I got to make people miss would you attend their funeral. And I came up with say something nice about a racist. Mm. And I'm not sure it works. Ate the walk to Hildy? Dead. Any he fast did. food, right? Any fast food <laughs> fucks it up. So, after we talked this thing out on the air, yeah, and now she knows our approach, mm -hmm. really tried to throw her off of my literal scent. Right. And I went there with a cell phone in hand right. and a MacBook. Wow, that's yeah. a heady play. And yeah. I asked for keys because... I've really got to get on this Zoom call, and I'd love some privacy. Stugatz, I can't believe that I walked into the bathroom, and I was like, oh, my God, that's awful. And then when I went to wash my hands, there was a MacBook Same. next to the sink. Same. <laughs> yeah, I we'll walked get... in there, too. I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I couldn't do the walk back out. I had to still pee. I was like, oh, yeah. man, I got to go through with this. We'll get to the spot that you guys put me you in. Couldn't, you, you couldn't go up walk... there to pee? You... Well, no, I wanted to just walk right out, but I didn't want to be the guy that yeah. clearly walked right out. So I was like, damn, he probably heard me come in, so now I just got to pee. And the whole time, I'm just like... Like, this is foul. So what happened? It's a small bathroom with one toilet yeah. and one stall it and sucks. just two you guys urinals. Have one stall? One yeah, stall. Just one. And wow. I was like, who's in there? And then I also saw the laptop and I was like, oh, Mike's in there. Yeah. So obviously <laughs> I didn't get key access because none of these fucking keys ever worked That's in this what room. I'm saying. Thank you. So I went, I got, I got one key card, didn't work. Went downstairs. Oh, you to were Hildy. trying to do it privately. Yeah, he yeah, was, was trying, trying to. He couldn't. No, this happened to me because she gave me seven key cards, all seven did, of did them. Did you not None use of any of the phone cards? <laughs> <laughs> so key card number one doesn't work. Yeah. She knows this problem with the key card, so she gave me a wristband that also is supposed to unlock it. Wristband number two does not unlock it. I go back downstairs. I'm like, hey, Hildy, uh, meeting starts very soon, <laughs> and none of these. Keys work. Might we have one that works? Because I don't want to use. A, I do go number two in in the public one quite often when I'm comfortable in the consistency and, and scent. You hover though, right? This one was gonna be bad. My stomach was really hurting, and so Frankie, our security guard, says, "Oh, I've got a key." And I'm like, "Great! I really need to start this meeting." And I get the key card. You're still pretending it's a meeting. I'm still pretending it's a meeting, and my spot has been blown up, obviously. So I'm kind of saying it in a sarcastic voice. Frankie gives me his key card. I go up there, bubble guts. Like, I need this door to open. It's getting bad. Doesn't unlock. No. Oh, and boy. so I just walk downstairs, kind of toss the, the, the key card Frustrated. in, in Frankie's general direction. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take the meeting over here, guys. <laughs> and we're stormed in the <laughs> And bathroom. I go over there. It's very obvious what's about to go down. So there's no place for me to put this MacBook that I... Why did I take this prop? I'm already regretting the MacBook. <laughs> I'm putting... I put to it on... Hildy off your sense. Just so. Yeah. yeah okay. So I put the MacBook <laughs> down on the sink, and I'm like, dear God, just be done before anyone can walk in here. Nope. All right? Nope. No. You guys weren't the first two people oh, I got no. in there. It's a lot of so shame there. I sit down. Are you looking at shoes like you knew it was us based off shoes? I, I know it was you by the sound of your stream. I have <laughs> clocked you guys out. All right? Really? Yeah. I, I even flushed before I started peeing just because I was that uncomfortable. Yeah. I, I needed some noise in the room. Right. Yeah. So Understandable. I'm in, yeah. I'm in there, and I've already done like six courtesy flushes oh, wow. because- yeah. No, that was post courtesy. Holy flush. shit! Yeah, wow. That, that, that is the most right discourteous yeah. courtesy so, I have ever smelled. Yeah. So I'm gone. I've I finished phase two and I'm rounding into phase three. Frankie opens the door. Oh, oh boy. Hey Mike. No. Hey Mike. <laughs> I opened up that door so you can go have your meeting. Thank you, and Frankie. I, and I'm on like, <laughs> through the. I'm like, meeting's already underway, Frankie. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, do not, I do not <laughs> like talking from a public I stall love it. No, when the I best. am yeah. pooping. No. No, the best. Frankie, he uses that stall more than anybody else, so he's got less shame about it. He's like, hey, Mike, I opened up, like, didn't get what I was doing. I'm not sure. I was dripping in sarcasm. And he's like, hey, open the door up. You can have your meeting now. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm good. And then Dan comes in. And then Chris Cody comes in. 
Everybody sees my MacBook. <laughs> Everybody knows it's it has to be me. Smell, it's such a great clue. <laughs> it, was it was the smell, smell that meant me before the clue that it was you. You know, the added variable to this that wasn't discussed was the multiple times you had to walk up and down the stairs. That did not help. No, oh, that's not good. No, that's not. That's no, unpleasant when you got the bubble. Yeah, gap. yeah. My my bleached asshole was real tight. I appreciate a foul smell. I got to be honest with oh, you. Oh come on. No, Dan, I kind of do. It's like, listen, you really let one out. You really had to go. I feel good for the person. Oh no, I do. That's yeah. not true. They got something out of them. Dan, that, did you say anything like, bad? Did you? No, you I guys, scurried out with yeah. like uh, with adopted shame. Like I, I felt bad for whoever was in there. But initially, Why? though, I already felt bad for that person, whoever they were. And then next thing I know, um, there's a MacBook to tell me who it is, and then I wanted to flee. But Chris Whittingham has landed, ladies and He's gentlemen. Alive! Uh, Tony, we don't know about yet. Tony, but, uh, Tony? he better be. Oh, Tony's oh, alive. Oh, oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. There thank it God. is. Give us the sideline. Go ahead. Give us the sideline. I'm upset that I'm holding the camera because I can't show you guys my certificate of skydiving. It's here. There you go. Oh, you're uh, getting that. Very right. pleased. You're gonna frame that, aren't you? That's the best part. Bucket is the list. Bucket list yeah. rides. Uh, so tell us about it. Interview Tony. Tell us uh, greatest fear. Tony's hair looks like uh, a jumbled mess of sensuality and and uh, you watch your tongue and confidence. Uh, you, <laughs> you you what you've done with your tongue is more than watching. <laughs> I, uh, I feel I feel good. Um, they gave me the old one, two, three, but pushed me out on one. He told me to be like a banana, which I thought was interesting. I had to be like kind of inverted right. the opposite way. My my boy Igor was great. Um, there's a huge dog walking by us. Sorry. Were you it's a so top good. or a bottom? Uh, I'm 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 the the base. So whatever that would be, mm. the bottom I guess. Mm. Yeah, we we're all bottoms. All, yeah. All the guests were bottoms. Mm. Hell yeah. Yeah. Igor was Igor was about 160 pounds soaking wet. And obviously, I'm. That you know, makes for a funny visual. Yeah, I built a little bit more sturdy. I was, you know, he was kind of on me like a backpack. But yeah. Whitney and I both felt the same thing. At at the moment where they pulled the parachute, they tightened really tight around our legs, and we both lost feeling in our legs, and we almost passed out. What's the conversation like in the air? Yeah, as you're going up, I right? I mean, the number of times that I had to say "Yeah, dude," I, I've never said "Yeah, dude" more <laughs> in my life. Like, try, like, there's this guy here. Mitch was his name. Miles. 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 Who Define. I want to be like him. I want to he's embrace the way of being where it's just, yeah, dude. No, we're like, we're like, the, he's opening the he's door doing it again. By the way, Rizzy. He's already. He's, he it. opened the door at thirteen thousand feet and goes, no, man, no problems. And it's like, I wish, like, I could do that unironically because I could do that for a day, but like playing a character. I just want to be that person. Guys, at the moment of truth, like, what was it like? Nervous? What, did you have doubt? Did either of you want to say, hey, I'm not doing this? Like, what was that like? No, the moment of no, truth? No. no? Never, ne never, time. never doubt. Never, never doubt. doubt. Born ready. We were go time for the moment. Did but they I will admit, so I, I was I was first off. So I, my, I was sat on the edge of where the door was with my feet hanging over, wind in my face. I'm going, when, when are we, when is this happening? What do I do? Do I get pushed? Do I fall? <laughs> do I jump myself? And then all of a sudden, there's the most intense wind you ever felt in your in your life in your face, and you're yelling, "Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit!" Do they mess with you in the air? Like, oh shit, it didn't work. Like, I tried to pull no. it. No, 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 no. no, no. Oh god, they should. that's terrible. They should, what though. a kind of terrible joke is that? <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> like to be panicked. That's, you're the spider Tony's monkey coming. on Tony's back, and you're like, oh shit, I forgot the shoot. <laughs> <laughs> they've done it before, though, Chris. You know they've done it before. <laughs> Wait, tell us what happened when you thought you were going to pass out because your legs went numb. A good follow-up question, Jessica, that we skipped right past. Uh, yeah. Yes, both of you felt... So the, the your, your stomach ends up hurting. I, I've got more questions before that, though. For how long were you falling, and what was the panic like while you were falling? So they say that the fall phase is about two minutes. Yeah. So you're going from 13,000 feet Holy shit. to 5,000 feet, no. and that's when they pull. Oh. And you look down, and I, I had a moment where I go, I think it's parachute time, lads. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and he pulled the parachute promptly thereafter. <laughs> <laughs> so you saw it getting Black. close. The, the, the earth was uh, the no, earth. The ten thousand feet. Earth was getting a little surreal. <laughs> and and take us through the two minutes. How long did the two minutes feel? Okay, so for me, they only felt long. They're like, yeah, dude, we're gonna spin in the air. And so he started spinning me, and I there's going to be video of me doing like 
hands to my throat going, no more, no mas with the spinning. I can't do the spinning. And then he, and then he spun me two more times because he didn't recognize that signal. So there's going to be a very uncomfortable video of that. Uh, but yeah, it feels like, how long is this going to be before we pull the parachute and you're like, cause they're like, Oh, you gotta, you gotta look out so that you can enjoy it and not look down, not look down. I, I don't know if I did any of that. I want to do this again so I could do it properly. Well, but Tony, uh, you, you didn't want it to just end. I can imagine myself in that circumstance, not enjoying it. it from the very first second, because I'm like, when does this end? This needs to end. I did not know it was two minutes of falling. Yeah. It actually fell really quickly. Here's Igor right here. Funny enough. Who's say hi, Igor. Hi, how are you? Let's Igor. go. That's my Igor. Hello, he was Igor. To me like a like a monkey on my back. It was crazy. <laughs> so the thing is, when you're falling from thirty thousand feet to five thousand feet, those eight thousand feet feel like twenty two seconds because you're falling at such a rate of speed that you don't comprehend how fast it is that you're falling. Oh, we got Miles coming up too. Oh, this is a, a party. You got oh, Miles. Come on, come over well, here. Congratulations, so, Dan, everyone short, succeeded. Congratulations, waist, Miles is coming up. You feel like your legs are going numb. Miles. Spinning, it's crazy. Okay, what? Miles, Miles, how did we do? I think you did well. You survived, man. Are yeah. you kidding me? How, how much fun did you have? On a scale of one to ten. It was a ten for me. Yeah. Was, well, actually, wow. you know what? It was a nine. It was a nine because of the parachute pull. Yo, the way that it feels on the upper legs. Tight, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend the rest of the day recovering from that one. That's going to be tough. Yeah. We, we sometimes go for a nice little uh, uh, leg strap massage after that. You know, mm. that's a thing. Hell you know. Yeah. But um, the most dangerous thing about skydiving right now is right now for you guys is you just want to want to quit your job and move to the drop zone and live in a tent and skydive the rest of your life, right? Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Good job. That witty we're ending on that. Skydiving ending. again, yeah. man. Thank what a you good guys. Time. Nice air awareness up there. I'm gonna say oh, air, 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 air awareness. Air awareness. Air awareness. Wow. Exactly. Sweet. Yeah. It was Thank you, Miles. Sweet Chuck, Thank you, Chuck pleasure. Amato, shit. gentleman and a scholar. Like yeah. Chuck oh, Amato, shit. <laughs> wow. Witty, we're gonna end on that. No. That yeah, Witty was perfect. <laughs> it was great. All right, thanks guys. It was a great back and forth. Good job, right. guys. Congrats. That's awesome. Yeah. Woo! Thanks, man. Everybody made it. Sorry about Man City. Yeah, piss off. <laughs> <laughs>